Welcome to Pod Nuts Daily for Monday, April 13th, 2009, episode number 161, I believe. Hope everybody's doing good out there. Got a lot of stuff to talk about today, so. <laughs> a lot of stuff to talk about today, so let's just get started before I keep reading the chat room and, and laughing. Okay, we got an error on an Outlook, a computer run an Outlook the other day. And the error was sfc.dll was the error we were getting. And this was on Outlook and other programs we were running. Um, this was a pro, uh, program computer my dad was working on. And I, I always thought SFC was system file checker. So that's the first thing that popped in my mind to run. So we decided to run scan SFC uh, from the command line, SFC space forward slash scan now. Scan now, all one word. Supposedly that makes sure all the, the DLLs and system, Windows files um, are in their original form and intact. And we ran that. It still happened. So that wasn't the problem. Um, did a little Googling on that. Found out you just need to replace that file with a working one. So we just pulled it off of another Vista. It was actually Vista, I believe. We pulled it off of another Vista machine, that file, sfc.dll, put it on that machine. The error went away. Everything worked fine. Um, I want to mention, we also ran Dialafix first. Every time I get DLL problems, I run Dialafix first because that... That replaces a lot of DLLs and repairs a lot of DLLs, and I, I always try that first. It's a quick fix, but that wasn't doing it, so we just copied it from another machine. Everything worked fine on that. Okay. Um, I got this DOS computer we need to fix. The guy's trying to run Lotus 123 on the thing. Okay, I see in the, I'm not, my volume's not loud enough, is it? Let me pull it, punch it up a little bit. I tend to get louder during the show, so I don't want to be too loud when I when I start off. Okay, cool. Uh, DOS computer. Guy wants to run Lotus 123. He's running DOS. Um, his DOS computer crashed. A capacitor basically exploded in the thing. Um, we we fixed it. And when he brought his computer in originally, we turned it on. Everything was fine. We ran everything. Everything was fine. He took it home, and it didn't work again. So he brought it back. This time we looked inside and saw the capacitor was busted. And he was getting just gobbledygook all over the screen, like green characters and, and all this stuff. So we're, we transplanted his hard drive and his five and a quarter floppy inch drive to a newer computer. Now, I don't even know what these the, these um, slots, like there's PCI slots are in new computers. What I don't know what the long black ones are called. <laughs> But it, it was you had to have a, a hard drive and a floppy drive controller in one of those long black slots. ISA, ISA in the chat room, they're saying. Um, my my computer knowledge has is spotty. I, I I was into computers at one point, and then I'm not in the, for another point of, for a series of years. Then I was back into it, then not. So I missed a couple things here. And during the the, I think the era of ISA ports, I wasn't around. So anyway, I he had an ISA port. We had to put a a hard drive, floppy drive controller in that port, plug it all in. It didn't work for me. I don't know what's wrong. I have to learn a little bit about that technology to fix this computer. But, um, yeah, it was running DOS, five and a quarter inch floppy. I think it was a 40 megabyte hard drive. But the guy loved his Lotus 123. He did not want XP. He did not want to upgrade. His daughter was begging him to. And he's, the more I thought about it, you know, the more I said, if a guy doesn't want to upgrade, just let him use what he likes, you know? It's, so I'm selling him a new system with and I'm putting DOS on it. So he likes it. He's happy with it. You know, you take somebody like that who's using DOS and you put them on Windows XP, they're not going to like it. It might take them forever to learn how to do it. And they're comfortable and they're happy with what they have. Just give them what they want. That's what I say. So I'll let you know what goes on with that computer. But uh, that's the first DOS system I had to fix in a long time. Uh, another customer brought in a Dell Dimension, a newish Dell Dimension desktop. He said it was making all kinds of noise. It was loud as heck. We took that baby outside, and they, they bought, actually bought a fan from Dell for like eighty bucks, a CPU fan. Dell sold them with the with the like, um, I guess the the frame that it sits in. It was just a major ripoff, and they had that brand new in the box, and they wanted us to install that. I mean, we took the thing outside. We hit it with the leaf blower. Huge chunks of dust come out, like not sticky smoker dust, but huge clumps of dust came out. Um, we 
we blew it out, cleaned that thing out, turned the computer on, we got it inside, no noise at all, perfectly quiet. Now they're going to return the fan, get their money back, so they're happy about that. It's all it needed was a good blowout. Yes, a leaf blower, you streamer. A leaf blower. You got to go back to the uh, early Podnuts up daily episodes and you'll see the saga of the leaf blower. Also, if anybody else doesn't know what I'm talking about, about me using a leaf blower, go back like 20, 30, 40 Podnuts daily episodes. We got a whole debate going on about that. It's the be- bottom line, best tool for blowing uh, dust out of a computer. Not a gas powered leaf blower. We're talking about like a $30 one from Home Depot or something that doesn't put out more than 150 miles per hour of wind. Okay, I had to install a USB modem on a HP. Let's not talk about that. It's boring. This one was a little interesting. I could not, for the life of me, I, I bought an OEM motherboard from Micro, uh, Micro Center. It was a power spec. It was pa- Micro Center packages their things as power spec. That's their brand name. This was a power spec motherboard on clearance. Did not come with the drivers on disk, on a CD. So I'm like, no big deal. I just go online and get them. Now, it turns out it was an ECS motherboard. Um, it was an ECS PVMT73 something. I, I got to get you the exact model number. But for the life of me, I could not find drivers for this machine. I ran Bellarc Advisor to find out what was in it. And the silly thing about Bellarc Advisor I found was, unless the drivers are loaded, Bellarc Advisor doesn't know what kind of hardware you have. I mean, it didn't even recognize the audio card until I did find an audio driver. But I found an audio driver finally from this thing. I think it was a Realtek. Loaded it up. I got the latest Realtek HD um, audio drivers. <clears throat> Put them in. And I got sound out of the thing. But there was also an unknown um, audio control, audio device that still would not leave the device manager. And when this guy took the computer home, he had a problem recording through the line in on the, the computer. So I have to believe that this, whatever was missing in the device manager was causing this line in problem with him. And I looked everywhere. I typed in the ECS. I typed in the model number of this motherboard. I typed in all similar types of motherboards. I tried audio drivers. I could not get this thing resolved. Finally ended up having to put another sound card in and just it was a sound blaster live loaded no, the audio drivers for that no problem sent them away with that if anybody knows of an awesome tool to basically either get drivers for for unknown hardware or let you know what kind of hardware exactly is on your motherboard so you can find the driver and find a manufacturer let me know i tried bellark i didn't try everest i've heard about that i use that a couple times uh let me know guys if you have any um um, any okay? Here we go in the chat room. Some guys are saying A I D A thirty two or Everest. That's for Fubar Johnny. New Brit says S S I W S S I W. Okay, I'll check that out. PC, 